Alright, so in this video we're going to start talking about metabolism and before we dive into the different metabolism reactions, phase 1 and phase 2 and all of that, I just want to give an overview of the purpose of metabolism so that when we do look at the phase 1 and the phase 2, it's easier to understand. So looking at this drug molecule right here, this is the structure of phenytoin. And phenytoin is, uh, if you look at the functional groups and based on what you know about acid-base chemistry, uh, it's a weak acid. And it's pKa, if you look at the pKa of phenytoin, you'll see that the pKa is within that 8 to 10 range, so the pKa is 8.3. And as we know, when you have a weak acid and the pH uh, of 7, right, we are, we're comparing it to a pH of 7, when the pH is less than the pKa, so in this case 7 is less than 8.3, then the weak acid will be primarily in its unionized form, right? We know that in order for an acid to be in its ionized form, the pH would actually have to be greater than the pKa. We would need the weak acid to be in a basic environment, meaning we would need the pH to be greater than the pKa. But in this case, the pH is less than the pKa, so it's an acidic environment. So it's an acid that we are placing in an acidic environment, right? And so in that case, we can, we can conclude that phenytoin is primarily in its unionized form at the pH of 7, right? Um, but then, if you want to excrete a drug, right, in order for a drug to be readily excretable, it actually has to be primarily in its ionized form, not its unionized form. And so we can look at these uh, metabolism reactions that are occurring. So we have a phase 1 metabolism reaction here and a phase 2 metabolism reaction here. This phase one metabolism reaction, we'll talk about what it's called and um, when it occurs, but I want you to focus on this phase two reaction here. It's actually called glucoronidation. Glucoronidation. Okay, and this phase two metabolism reaction turns this hydroxyl group into this large group right here. Right? So everything else in the structure remained the same but focus on what's happening here. We get the addition of this carboxylic acid. So if again I want to use the pH of 7, right? when we put a carboxylic acid which has a pKa of 1 to 5, when we put that carboxylic acid in the pH of 7, well we're putting an acid in a basic environment. right? As you can quickly see that the pH is greater than the pKa. So it's the opposite of what we just looked at in the original structure of phenytoin. So the pH is greater than pKa. We're putting an acid in a basic environment. So we're going to have primarily the ionized form of this carboxylic acid. So essentially, we've gone through these metabolism phase 1, phase 2 reactions. We have turned a nonpolar unionized uh, drug molecule into an ionized polar drug molecule that is actually readily excretable. Whereas what we started with was uh, non-excretable. Okay. Or less excretable. So through this phase one reaction, um, phase one reaction made it possible for the phase two reaction to happen. So this addition of this hydroxyl group was important to pave the way for the phase two conjugation glucoronidation reaction. That's why a lot of times uh, this hydroxyl group uh, could be uh, labeled or kind of named a handle, and that's what Dr. Luo uh, calls these groups. She calls them a handle because the hydroxyl group is allowing, like the this phase one reaction, this addition of the hydroxyl group is allowing for the glucoronidation to take place. 
The group chlorination can't take place right away over here. We first have to add the hydroxyl group. Once that's added, we have the group chlorinidation group. Then we get this COOH, super convenient because at pH 7, it's going to be nice and ionized, nice and polar, and readily excretable. Okay, and so as we just uh, discussed, the overall purpose is to go from a nonpolar, hydrophobic, unionized compound, right, to a more polar, hydrophilic, more ionized molecule. You can also use other terminology like hydrophobic is the same as lipophilic, right? If it hates the water, it loves fats. Or hydrophilic is the same as lipophobic. If it uh, loves the water, then it hates the fats, hypophobic, right? So get familiar with that terminology, but overall, we're going from nonpolar to polar to allow for excretion. Okay. And another three main functions I want to talk about uh, for metabolism uh, is first of all, one main function will be inactivating drug action, right? So that's one function, inactivating drug action. Second overall function of drug metabolism is deactivating toxic compounds, right? And that's really important uh, with acetaminophen, with APAP, because with acetaminophen, one of the metabolites is actually toxic and it requires glutathione conjugation, uh, which is a metabolism reaction, to inactivate the toxic compound. So that metabolism reaction is actually detoxifying uh, toxic metabolites. And that's why you, there's a certain amount of acetaminophen you can have in the day because you can't um, overload that reaction, right? It could eventually reach saturation and then you can no longer, you don't have enough glutathione and then you can't uh, detoxify the toxic compounds anymore, right? So that's important with APAP and we'll discuss that. And then the last uh, function I wanted to talk about is activating prodrugs because some drugs are not yet activated in their original form and so metabolism will actually activate the non-active drug into the um, active metabolite right so the one and two here kind of seem like opposites and that just depends if your drug is initially active then metabolism can inactivate it if your drug is initially inactive it's a prodrug then metabolism will activate it and then this critical function right here is metabolism can deactivate toxic compounds so keep this in mind throughout the next few videos that we're trying to go from a non-polar unexcretable drug to a more polar excretable drug. But keep in mind, when we talk about phase one and phase two reactions, some drugs can actually skip phase one and move on directly to phase two. And then some drugs will uh, not even require phase one because they already can go straight to phase two, or some drugs can just go straight to excretion if they're already hydrophilic ionized drugs. So it's not like you have to go through phase one and then phase two, although that's the most common, or not, that's like what we'll see a lot in our practice problems, uh, going through phase one followed by phase two, but some drugs don't have to go that route. So don't think of this as always the case. Right, so yeah, you can have phase one followed by phase two, or you can have a drug that skips phase one and goes straight to phase two, or maybe there's a drug that doesn't need phase one or phase two. So don't, this isn't set in stone, uh, but a lot of the practice problems we're gonna go over, we'll see how phase one paves the way for phase two, because phase one can add on that handle group, like a hydroxyl group or a, a NH2 or some other group that allows for phase two to happen, okay? And in the next few videos, we'll go through several practice problems and metabolism pathways like nafcillin, butacaine, meclizine, and we'll see APAP detoxification.